Good modeling is all about having a good technique. Good technique results in a higher quality model that you can make faster. The more experience you get, the higher your quality and the faster you will move. If you take some time to make some special tools, you can both improve quality and speed. And sometimes special tools will allow you to use improved techniques. What follows is a short review of some very useful tools that I have made and I use constantly. They make, for me anyway, modeling more efficient and actually more pleasurable. Below the video are links to other videos that show you how I make some of these tools and how each of them is used. Look when it's convenient. And while you're down there, subscribe and ring the bell to stay up to date with our channel. You can also get a discount coupon for things offered in our store, Home and Hobby. You can read about that below too. Now let's get on with a review of the tools. This is a collection of homemade and modified tools that are very useful for a scratch builder. We'll go through them one by one. First, and my most useful tool, are forceps. These are regular medical forceps, but I modify them. This larger pair, I cut off the lock, add a rubber band, and now what I have, move this stuff out of the way, is a nice set of tweezers or pliers. I use these a lot. I also have smaller forceps. With these, I've added the rubber band also, but I did not cut out the lock. Sometimes I want to lock this stuff very tightly. I use it when I'm using my punch a lot, working brass. Let's take a look at the punch, which is the next thing I'll show you. This is homemade punch. It's nothing but a piece of bracket that I bought at the, the home uh, supply. I drilled holes the size I want, and then I take some steel, round steel, put it in a rotor in a drill, and file it down and make a punch. And it's great for punching out brass. You can see the size of the brass circles I can make with it. Those are very effectively, when I have to work with them, held with forceps. I can hold them tightly. I don't have to use a jeweler's vise. I can work them, shape them as I wish. I also use this to make gears. Here is a gear, a small gear, and again, let me get it up close. Well, let me do what I said I do. Put it in my forceps. That's a gear. Get this thing to focus a little bit. There it is. That's handmade gear. I made that out of some copper wire and brass brass centerpieces. I'll have a video on how to do that. But you notice how nice and easy, easy it is to handle with the forceps. Let's refocus. There we go. So we'll move these aside without losing them. I don't want to lose that gear in particular. That will go in 
a crossing gate. Move the forceps aside. Then, this is a useful scribe as well as holding tool for soldering. It's a chopstick with a nail inserted in the end and sharpened. It's great for scribing. It's great for holding. It, it uses like a pencil. It, it's great for scribing if you work on a carton models, uh, card, even brass. Excellent tool. Simply made. It cost zilch. And then alligator clips. An alligator clip. You use these in many ways. What I do with the alligator clips is put some shrink tube over the end, the electrical shrimp shrink tube, the insulator, and heat it. And that covers the teeth. So I now have a very convenient and light clamp. And they're very, very cheap. I like them better than close pins. They're easy to handle. I also use the alligator clips. I put them on a piece of wire and a dowel. I now have a long stick into which I can put something and I can hold it at a distance if I want to spray paint for the most part or spray glue on, on brush trees. Anything that I don't want close to me, I can put it out on the balcony, whatever. It's a nice tool. I, I don't get my hands a mess. This thing is well used. I had to clean it up. Uh, but it's, it's, again, alligator clip with shrink tube. Then use the alligator clip to make another third hand. It's a piece of wire with the clip on it, bend it however you want, and you have a nice third hand. Put a weight on the end, put it wherever I want, put it whatever angle I want. I don't have to worry about screwing things and unscrewing things. Actually, I have four of these things, and I can really put them together and handle my wire, whatever. This is a scribe. It is a tool that I use to, to scribe acrylic. It's a great acrylic cutting tool. You can see my video on how to cut acrylic at home. I also use this thing uh, to scribe uh, brass. When I'm working brass, it makes a nice uh, niche in the grass. You can, and it makes it easy to bend whatever you have to do. It's nothing more than a hacksaw blade ground down to a sharp point and a knife edge. One very handy tool. Use it a lot. Here is another scribe. A ballpoint pen that has run out of ink. Actually this one didn't run out of ink. I used it this morning. But it is great for working on uh, to make corrugated metal. This is uh, some aluminum from aluminum baking pan. I'm using, I'm going to make this into uh, a coal bin. I'll, I'll glue this to some card and I'll make an HO scale coal bin. But you can make roofing, you can make fencing, very easy. With this, line it up with a ruler and put it on a piece of card so it's got a kind of a soft background. Don't scribe on a hard background. It'll scrape. Again, I'll have a video on how to, how to make those. This tool is a sneaker. It's a piece of flat stock. I file it flat so it's smooth. Then you can take bar stock. Actually, what I did was I took an old hammerhead and I 
a file that smooth, a draw file it. Now I have a nice fit. What I do is put a piece of copper or brass wire in there underneath it and give it a shot with a hammer. The result is I get these extremely small, fine, flat pieces of copper or brass. I use these to make gears. I use them to make uh, ladders, to make windows. Uh, you can, again, use different size copper wire or brass wire to get different thicknesses and different widths. Very simple to use. Like I say, you put your wire here, put this on top, and then I use a pretty substantial hammer and give it a whack and out comes a nice flat piece of metal. Now this one also is used sh to shape things. With it I make forms, I make door handles, it, it, it consists of, and I got the thing taped down, let me untape it here. Pardon me, I, I didn't prepare well. A piece of flat stock that I routed into a piece of hardwood. I have two steel rods on the side here. And what I do is set the, the width that I want and put my brass, if I want to make a door handle, I can a flat door handle. I take one of my pieces, lay it on there, and then I can hit it with a form, piece of wood, piece of plastic, whatever. I've got a video that shows how to make door handles using this. I use this tool a lot. It's Like I say, it's great for forming things. I make all sorts of pieces for my brass work. And then, if you're going to solder, you need a good flux. And about the best flux that I've found to use is the California flux. California is a resin. It's a solid resin. And I, I use it in two forms. I chip the California up. Again, I have a video on this. And I make, and I, and I add alcohol to it. And I get a nice liquid flux. I, I, I put that flux in a syringe with a nail, or I use a brush and put it on. It, 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 it's one of the best fluxes you'll have. I also then use uh, California. I don't dissolve it in as much alcohol. I make a gel. So I have a California gel, a resin gel. This is a great insulator. I use it when I'm soldering uh, magnet wire to LEDs or anywhere else I want to insulate a joint. I just put this gel over the joint and touch the gel with the soldering iron. It quickly melts and it forms an insulating boundary. So this is this is a grouping of tools. Notice how well organized it is. These are the tools I use constantly. And I thought you might be interested because even one of them, particularly the forceps, boy, these things are great, can help you and make you more efficient. So look at everything else below now and watch the videos that you see there. Also, did I miss something? Can you add to the discussion? I like having conversations 
with fellow modelers, and other modelers can reply to what you have to say also. So leave a comment. And while you're at it, subscribe to stay up to date as I add more that may help you. Thank you for watching, and I hope to hear from you. Take care, stay healthy, and have a good life.